in his life. There was a reproach. I don't know that which you have been dreaming about and that which you have been believing God for, that there appears to be a delay. Oh, this morning, when they came to the tomb, they realized that the resurrection and the life was no more in the grave. The stone of reproach had been rolled away. Oh, sir, can you pray? Oh, ma, can you pray? Lift up your voice unto heaven and pray and say, Father, Roll away the reproach. Every box in my life. Lord, let them cease today, now. Prayer. Oh, as that the stone of reproach will be rolled away. Maldoloro Borondo. Wrestle. Wrestle with God. James Cup wrestled with God. name we have prayed I thought your amen would sound like thunder in Jesus mighty name we have prayed I will worship you I will worship you Worship you. Shout aloud, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. It's wonderful to be in the presence of God, hallelujah. And I bless the name of the Lord for such a time as this, amen. And I thank God for pastor, even as uh, uh, when I received the phone call, amen. Hey, if the cup will pass over me, God have mercy, hallelujah. Thank you, sir, hallelujah. Greet someone next to you and say, welcome to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 
the very last Sunday in the month before we go into the ember months. The ember months will not take you or your loved one away in the mighty name of Jesus. You will conquer, you will overcome in the name of Jesus. First Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. Verse 37, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. We're in the season of divine upliftment. 1 Samuel 17, verse 37. And David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine, this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. If you are the one who the Lord will be with, shout it loud, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the 45th verse, verse 45 of the same First Samuel 17. Then David said to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Oh, may I pause here to say that all neighbors, friends, and all the earth will know that, oh, there is someone here who serves a living God. Ah, if you are that one, shout a loud hallelujah. Verse 50 says, so David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistines and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Oh, that which represents Goliath in your life that is not allowing you to be lifted. Oh, the head of such Goliath is going off this morning. If you are that one believing it, shout a loud hallelujah. No longer feel that you belong down. The Lord is making room for you at the top. Job chapter 22 verse 29. Job 22 verse 29 says, For some, they will talk about a casting down. Oh, but for some, a child of God in the redeemed Christian church of God, this very last Sunday in the month of August, the Lord will cause your testimony to be that you are rising. You are lifted. If you are that one, shout the loudest, hallelujah, hallelujah. David's lifting came when things were going all so poorly and so badly in Israel. Threats of the enemy to turn them to slavery and bondage. If you look at David, how did it all begin? How did it all begin? In 1 Samuel 16, it looked like what I will call a home fellowship. Make sure you don't miss home fellowship. It looked like what was a house fellowship in 1 Samuel chapter 16. But it turned into a coronation service. It turned into an ordination service. It turned into oh, showcasing the one who in Acts chapter 13 verse 22, God himself had to say that this is a man that is after my heart. Who is that fellow? Oh, who will be the one God will testify about? That this one is special. This woman, this man is after my heart. If you are that one, let him hear you shout a loud hallelujah. Are you here? It appears you have missed out or you have passed an opportunity. 
the almighty God will turn things around. David that appeared to have been forgotten in the back streets of life. Suddenly, kindred appeared to have forgotten him. Suddenly, God changed his story. Psalm 92, you read Psalm 92, verse 10 to 13. He talks about the horn of oil, the, uh, the horn being lifted. Oh, someone's head will be lifted. 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 If you are that one, oh, that is in line for a lifting, oh, shout a loud hallelujah. Maybe you want a topic, even a theme for this message. A season of lifting. A season of lifting. Why is it a season? Because for someone, you'll be going from glory to glory, from success to success, oh, from blessing to blessing, to become a blessing. If you are that one, shout a loud hallelujah. How did David overcome those obstacles to become lifted? He had to face a bear. When the bear came, what does a bear signify? To me, a bear signifies unfriendly friends. Unfriendly friends. Deceivers. Deceivers. He had to face unfriendly friends. Deceivers. And the Bible says in Psalm, the Psalms, Psalm chapter 41, it says, all oh, verse 7, Psalm 41 verse 7. All that hate me whisper together against me. They will gang up to make sure that you do not have joy, you do not have promotion, you do not laugh last. Against me do they despise my heart. Even sickness came in verse 8. It says, an evil disease say they cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Verse 9 is the delicate one. He says, yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, had lifted up his heels against me. One grandma shared a story that in the house they build, built at home, that it is even those who they feed that came to boggle the house. The Lord God Almighty will intervene in your case in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will expose every deceiver, every unfriendly friend in the name of Jesus. David had to overcome the lion. The lion is a devourer. Malachi says, Malachi chapter 3, he says for those who will give, he will rebuke the devourer on their behalf. I believe God for someone here this morning. Every devourer of your blessings, every devourer of your health, every devourer of your destiny, the almighty God will arise and scatter them in the mighty name of Jesus. And then came Goliath. Goliath, the destiny destroyer. Goliath that said this one will not finally become king, that the anointing will not work, that the anointing will not work. There was a pastor at the camp, at the convention, who said that the day that he was born, the chief herbalist in the village or the town said he was celebrating. He said, the one that will take over from me when I die has been born. And after that, the pastor just could not have victory until he was anointed, ordained. And by the time he was testifying at the convention, he had totally been free of sickness and ill health and all the machinations of the devil. There is someone here this morning, every destiny destroyer, oh, whether it is uh, Goliath, every destiny destroyer, the almighty God will cause them to cease to operate in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you know that a destiny destroyer is adultery? A destiny destroyer is fornication. A destiny destroyer, according to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, is that which will not allow a child of God to walk with God. There are 
forces that work against a man. Life deals blows. But be of good cheer. Let us see in our Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians chapter 2, who is the one that is lifted and will lift us up. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you. Please kindly turn to a neighbor to your left and to your right and say, neighbor, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also had highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. Verse 10 says that at the mention, at the name Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in earth and of things, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Hallelujah. Steps to lift him. We see in the example of our Lord Jesus. First, you need to be friends with Jesus, sir. You need to be friends with Jesus, ma. The children, we learned as children, the children sing, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. He's my friend, he's my friend. He will never leave me, he will never leave me. He's my friend. I thought we had children of God in the house. One more time. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's my friend. He's my friend. He will never leave me. He will never leave me. He's my friend. He's my friend. Matthew 17. Verse 1 to 8, when you go and read it, Matthew 17, verse 1 to 8, our Lord Jesus Christ decided to take some friends aside and up to higher ground. At the end of it all, Bible says in verse 8, and when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. There is someone here this morning. You are a friend of Jesus. Let your focus be on Jesus. Let your focus be on Jesus. Hallelujah. No compromise. Turn to your neighbor to your left and to your right this morning, please. And say, no compromise. No compromise, sir. No compromise, ma. Hallelujah. There is a testimony I love. A testimony of an angel I know. Hallelujah. Ah, coming from a background where no one had ever gone to the university in her family. Amen. And going to a, co a government school, a state school. Hallelujah. And challenges of paying fees. Amen. And then there was an opportunity to learn mathematics and it looked like a devourer I wanted to come, a teacher, but the Bible says, flee all appearances of evil. She stayed focused because she comes from a pastoral background. Amen. Her mother is a pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. She did not allow for the devourer. She stayed focused and did not compromise. And God opened the door to the higher institution. Today, oh man, wait for her because she's operating in an industry, in a, in a sector in which you will not see a man around in the, on the site. There are, you only see carpenters who are men, no female carpenters. Oh, you will see laborers who are all men. You will see even engineers, all men. In fact, one engineer said, I want to follow you to church one Sunday. Maybe you wear boots to church on Sunday. Oh, turn to a neighbor this morning if the Lord will give you a testimony of no compromise and say neighbor no compromise
steps to lift him. Our Lord Jesus Christ showed in the scripture we read about him, Philippians chapter 2, that the way to lifting is humility. James 4, 7 to 10 says, submit to God. James 4, submit to God. So those who are still one leg in and one leg out, like the chicken who comes into a village for the first time, who will be looking whether there's a chicken republic in town, do not end up as a pepper soup in the, in the pot. Hallelujah. Amen. No compromise. Humility. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. And he will lift you up if you can humble yourself before him. Hallelujah. Number three. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 14. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 14. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 14. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14 says, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Oh, that is another way of understanding and lifting. Someone who will flourish in the city of Palms, lift up your voice and shout a loud hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four. When you carry a burden, it will not allow you to be free to praise God. So what do I do to the burden? What do you do to the burden? You lay it at the foot of the cross. You lay it at the foot of the cross in which the Lord Jesus Christ was slain. Matthew 11, verse 28 to verse 30. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to, 20 to verse 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take on my burden. That means someone needs to take on the burden of the Lord Jesus so that he can carry your own burden. And one of the needs, the, the thing that is at the heart of the Lord is to go out and tell about his goodness. To go out and win souls. To go out and draw men unto him. First Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. He says, cast all your cares upon him. I got an understanding one day that the devil just waits outside the church waiting for those who came to drop their burdens at the altar in the house of God before the Lord. And he sees that when they come out, they come back out carrying their burdens. And then he begins to give them more and more trouble. Drop that burden at the foot of the cross. Number five, begin to shine your light. Begin to shine your light. Brighter and brighter. Proverbs 4.18. Proverbs 4.18 says, Those who belong to the Lord will shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. It says, let your light so shine. Turn to your neighbor one more time. Your neighbor might be sleeping. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, let your light shine. If your light is going to shine till you see Jesus, shout aloud, hallelujah, hallelujah. Before the lifting, before the lifting, you must understand, the lifting is not for the ungrateful. Ah, uh, ah, uh, the lifting is not for the ungrateful because see what proves, I mean Romans Romans, if you go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, it says, verse 21, Romans 1, 21, it says, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts was darkened professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God to an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and 
creeping things. We should stop there. You can read to the 23rd verse. I mean to the 24th verse. So ingratitude and ungrateful heart will be given a perverse nature. An ungrateful heart will be given a perverse nature. They will begin to have imaginations and thoughts that will draw God far, draw them far away from God. One thing I love about David. David, the day that he failed God and he had missed it and was living in grave sin. The Bible says in Psalm 51, Psalm 51 verse 1 to 4, Psalm 51 verse 1 to 4, that David acknowledged that he had missed it. That is a thing with man. Can you acknowledge that you have missed it? That he had sinned. And in the 12th verse there, the 12th verse of Psalm 51 verse 12, he said, I need the joy of salvation. There is no joy outside of salvation. God dealt with me even though saved, but still one leg in and one leg out, and I was not intending to go to the redemption camp. Now in my family, they say that this is the uh, representative of the general overseer from the camp. Hallelujah. I got to camp, and God exposed something to me. The Holy Spirit ministered to me. That with all the places I've been to, and I dare say I've been to places that and schooled that see before you a man who has been to more places than you have and done more things than you have and is more than you can ever be. And my eyes were opened to see God use a man and that man bowed down and knelt before God and I did a study and I said ah no matter the foreign training no matter the uh, uh, touche schooling that it is worthy of the scriptures that a man should be able to kneel before his maker another thing again before the lifting deal with fear and unbelief fear and unbelief will not allow room for lifting. Another thing that you must look at to deal with is unforgiveness, bitterness. It deflates the bubble. Unforgiveness, bitterness deflates the bottle, the bubble, the bubble. I want to round up. And I believe for someone God wants to give you a new beginning. He wants to do a new thing. He wants you to be lifted up. I believe the Holy Spirit will take over for you in your life. Will take over for you. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. You're going to open your own mouth and pray one more time with all your strength because the devil is a roaring lion seeking to devour. So you're going to lift up your voice and pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, expose every deceiver, expose every unfriendly friend that devises my hurt or oh, that is working against my lifting. Prayer, lift up your voice. Oh, if you say you do not have enemies, oh, as a believer, you're a joker. Lift up your voice unto God and begin to pray and say, Father, expose every deceiver, expose every form of deceit. He said that even those who eat with me, oh, they have planned my hurt. They have planned my downfall. Oh, mockers. Oh, friendly friends all around. Expose them, oh God. Father, make me to overcome. Thank you, Father. 
Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Now you're going to lift up your voice unto God and pray that the devourer all oh, will be destroyed. Lift up your voice unto God and pray. And say, Father, every destiny destroyer, every Goliath, oh, in the way of my lifting, oh, Father, I cut off the head right now. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Put fire in your prayer. Every Goliath that says, ah, you will not get to the palace. Oh, you will not reach the top. Oh, that you will not fulfill your goal. Oh, they come in the form of sickness. They come in the form of failure. Oh, they come in the form of unfriendly friends. Manolo Romorondo, Zodo Romorondo. Oh, you will step on your Goliath to victory. Oh, they come in the form oh, of flesh. Oh, worldliness. Oh, every Goliath that will not allow me to reach my goal. I cut off the head of every Goliath right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. So it shall be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now you lift up your voice unto God and pray. That the Holy Spirit should touch you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you are here this morning, if you are here this morning, and you know you have been struggling, and you find yourself in a situation like David, who came to realization that he had come short, he had fallen, and he needed to be restored, the joy of salvation. Where you are, just put your hand on your chest, Put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on. Put your hand on your heart. Are you the one that is here this morning? Put your hand on your heart. Oh, and just talk to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, today I come to you. Lord Jesus, today I come to you. Have mercy upon me. Save my soul. Wash me clean in your blood. Give me a new beginning. Write my name in your book of life. And restore the joy of salvation to my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for accepting me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. Holy Spirit. Move me down. service and ordination service. If you are here this morning, you want hands laid upon you. Oh, David had hands laid upon him and he did not cease to go that even the day blind Bartimaeus was crying for deliverance. He had to call Lord Jesus and say, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. You want this morning Oh, for the pastor to lay hands upon you so that you can be catapulted to greater heights. It's an opportunity for you, even as we begin to worship the Lord. Oh, the heavens are open right now. Oh, the Spirit.
Spirit, Holy Spirit, move. 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 Move it now. Help me to make my life. Make my Oh, <laughs> 